ways to persevere through monotonous knitting or knitting and getting over that dread melt. <laughs> That's the theme of today's podcast. I'm your host, Steph, also known as the Knitting Samurai and Adornit Steph. Um, this is episode seven of the Adornits podcast. We're going to talk about getting over and perseverance later in the show, but first we're going to have a throwback. We're going to announce a new knit along. I know I said there wouldn't be one, but I really wanted to do one. <laughs> a little smidge of shop talk, uh, some additions to the stash, some dream knitting. Um, what else? I'm going to share how to get over the how to persevere through boring knitting and finally there'll be a little bit of works in progress and a little bit of life so hopefully it's a good show <laughs> so the throwback sweater for today it doesn't throwback doesn't always have to be a sweater it just has to be a project that I'd knit previously a month ago five years ago or in this case um, six years ago holy smokes so I uh, this is the Jackaroo sweater by Amy Herzog I had done her craftsy class and so I wanted to make a more fitted garment um, I normally would have knit a 40 inch bust 40 inch 48 inch bust at that time and after taking the craftsy class I decided to knit a 44 inch bust and just make the do fewer decreases for the waist shaping because I am a little bit more of a um, straight not so curvy and I finished it in about a month looking at my Ravelry notes I knit the sleeves first and the front and the back and it has this great ribbing detail um, down the front panel I don't know how well you're gonna see that with me wearing it but I finished it and I bought buttons while I was in London this is Barocco Vintage, which is a worsted weight acrylic nylon wool blend, um, mainly acrylic at 52, 40 nylon, and 8 wool. Happy to knit with it. It's a, I've used it for several projects. The sleeves are very fitted, and I like that about it. And when it was done, it's you could see the collar fits well, but I can't, I can't close much. And this was similar to how it fit when I knit it, and so. Even though I had the buttons, I never wove in my ends and I never finished it. And this sweater was on my goals, aspirations, just doing the finishing. All I have to do, weave an end, sew on buttons, it's done. Um, it was on that for years, it's hot, and years, like 14, 15, 16, and it's just been sitting unfinished in my closet, yarn closet, for that long. So I took it out. And I think I'm gonna finish it. Even though it's a little small on me now, I think it would be really nice addition to have for this winter, and I really like red. Red's my favorite color. <laughs> Not really, but it used to be my favorite color. So, trip to the past. Hopefully, I will revisit this. If I weave in the ends, I think you'll have to knit something, not just sew on buttons uh, for stash dash. But, so. I know I said there would not be a knit along, but then I got thinking about it and I really like the chatter in the group when we have a knit along. We're not a super chatty group normally and so I feel like that pushes us. So I wanted to keep it very open and I wanted to do a knit along that would encourage me to finish my projects. Of course, all my knit alongs are themed like that. So <laughs> I've been working on my Sunset Highway sweater which was all the rage a couple years ago for Rebecca. And who's it by? Caitlin Hunter, maybe? Uh, you know, I could consult the pattern. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. And my pet copy is all highlighted up. Yes, Caitlin Hunter, I win at remembering. And that's what it looks like. I had seen someone's and thought the color work was beautiful that they chose and so I tried to stash dive and get some more colors and I ended up purchasing some Malabrigo whatever their fingering weight is um, or I think it's their sock yarn there's a tag right here I could look and not guess uh, superwash merino Malabrigo sock yeah purchasing some of that to do for the sweater body so I've been alternating skeins 
since I stopped knitting this, helico knitting, helic, helic knitting has come around. And so I've changed the way I'm alternating um, the two skeins of yarn and I'm not noticing a real big difference. But so sometimes I do one stripe, sometimes I do two stripes before I switch between color. And so this is a lot of orange. And if I get this fingering weight sweater finished during Stash Dash, that would be amazing, right? It's one of my stretch goals for Stash Dash. So let's have an orange, peach, maybe even golden, um, knit along for the month of July. That's what I thought. So what do you think? You wanna join? <laughs> Summer is just so colorful and bright and I felt like orange, like hot time in the city, I don't know, Lisa of Fiber Knit did a colorway that was this hot pink and orange and yellow and I just, I want to do the orange. So that's where my brain is at. So we're going to start now. Whips are welcome. Chatter is worth entries. Um, all the details are on the Ravelry group. I already posted it over there. Uh, again, showing pictures with Adornet stitch markers will get you two points in the entries and FOs will get you three points. So. Come on over, let's talk, let's share what we're working on. I have one of the new Harry Potter stitch marker progress keepers on mine. So this moves us into shop talk. So I haven't done a lot of updates and I just, it's not that I don't want to, it's just, I haven't. Uh, life's been happening and whatever. But I'm really excited and I want to do some more Harry Potter stuff. You guys seem to really love it. And so I'd like to um, get a little update out there with Harry Potter and some more summer themed stuff because summer's gonna have come and gone and I'm not going to have made anything summer themed. And I love the making of the new items, right? Like replanning things into the shop. Um, so like replenishing the stock, sorry, can, it's great, but I love the new. The new is what drives everyone who works in retail. So I wanna get some new up there. So I don't think I'll have them finished by the time this airs, but if you look on Friday, cause I'm not gonna work over the weekend. <laughs> if you go to the shop on Friday, you will find some new things there. So yay to newness. And thank you everyone who shopped the 60% off sale. It was awesome. So. Did I mention this is a fat squirrel bag? One of my favorites. This is the most giant bag ever, but it goes really well with my shirt. So let's keep on rolling, right? Um, additions. What is new to the stash? So um, this beautifulness is a skein of sun soaked hocus pocus. So this must be one of her Halloween colors. I think this is um, the most beautiful color that Jody does. It's this gorgeous um, pale purple with Stellina and bits of black and gold in there. It's so beautiful. So I have to find the perfect project for this. But I also got in that order some little minis for Valentine's minis and I think they're just super cute. Have I shown these to you? I feel like I did, but I don't know. This is what I have. And I know I've shown you this one before, right? And I was trying to get a black to match it. So here they are together, which takes me to my dream knitting. I have finally decided, sort of, not really, I'm saying decided, but I can't seem to handle deciding. And maybe I'll just make them both. <laughs> so I'm going to cast on the resistance shawl first. That's the point. So that's what it looks like. I think the high contrast of the black and gold will be really nice in this. I also think the black and gold, it's like a gray charcoal, um, together in this modular cowl, which is the frequency cowl, would also be really nice. Um, um, the construction of this intrigues me because you knit the, it's modular and you're doing the rectangles or the the squares in different directions and different sizes and it comes up turns into this gorgeous cowl but I also am drawn to this because this is directional knitting and both of these patterns are from a knit scene I don't know which number it is hmm. but it was the knit unit theme they did a whole section on that so and Meggie Burkle designed this one and the frequency cowl was designed by Barbara 
Kruptar. Kruptar. So that's one thing I'm dream knitting about right now. The other thing that I'm dream knitting about is this. They are the Mustang knit, Mustang mittens. I think it's from the same issue of Interweave. Nope, of Knit Seam Scene. I purchased it and went through and printed a bunch of patterns, but I really like the look of that. I sort of want to do this because it calls for a. Uh, I'm showing you everything. Sorry, it calls for 220 yards, 100 grams. So it calls for worsted weight. So I'm thinking this might be fun for one of the DVD colorways to do that for one of the months. Hold two strands together and knit these diagonal garter striped mittens. I think they turn out really cute. But I also have this skein of um, Liberty Wool Light that I have not found a home for. So this is also it's like a fingering weight. It's very thin. 50 grams. Yeah, it is a fingering. 50 grams, 400 yards. So I have several skeins of this. I bought enough to knit a baby sweater. So I could dig in and do this. I was thinking I would let the color of my jacket decide, but at this point I'll be buying a new winter coat or revisiting an old one. I have a black with white polka dots. North Face, that's really cute. I never really got to wear it. So which one would go better with that? Mm, I think I, right here I'm deciding. I'm going to use that for my next DVD. Yep. Um, because I have that that uh, NASA colorway that's black, purple, lime green, and maybe a blue, but the black is the predominant color, and so I think that would turn out really nice with a black coat. Yeah. Hey, today's show is 10 ways to persevere through monotonous knitting or get over the knitting dreadmill. <laughs> getting over the knitting dreadmill. When you hit a point in your project, <laughs> and I hit it this weekend with my shawl, when you just feel like you can knit and knit forever and never get where you're going, and it's just, you wanna do anything but knit that some more. So here are my 10 tips to get you through that monotonous knitting. Number one, set a goal. Set a goal. Set a simple goal, break it up from the whole big, it, in, let's say you're knitting a sweater say okay today I'm going to get to the elbow of the sleeve and tomorrow I'm gonna to finish the sleeve set manageable goals that help you measure your progress and with finishing dates number two picture yourself with the finished object picture yourself wearing it giving it as a gift how the recipient will react to it picture yourself using it how are you gonna have it in your daily life and incorporate it Envision the finished product and hold that in your head as you're knitting through these slow times. Number three, look at other people's projects. I swear you will get so much motivation from seeing what other people have been able to accomplish. Encouraging It encourages you that you will also be able to. And at the same time, it helps drive your motivation for I want that item as well, right? They could do it, I want it, I want it now. So that will help push you forward. Number four, talk about it. Journal your progress. Make Instagram posts. Keep notes in Ravelry of your project progress. Go to chat rooms and talk about it. I guarantee talking about what you have been able to achieve will help motivate you to continue forward. Number five, stay consistent with your goals, right? There's no slacking here. So you set the goal of getting to that sleeve. That doesn't mean you can let it go, right? Be dedicated, hold yourself accountable. I know it, you don't feel like knitting on it and you would like to sit on the couch and just watch TV or do something else, but you had said you would get to that sleeve. Push yourself. And going back to number four, then write about it. Write about how you've held yourself accountable so other people can cheer you on. <laughs> number six. Okay, this one's a little self-serving, but mm, use progress keepers. I know, I know. I used to think they were like, okay, that's nice to see from one week to another how much a podcaster knit. I enjoyed that. Knitting Wolf, Dawn, used to do that all the time, and um, Karen 
from around the twist. They were the first two that I noticed and I would be like, oh wow, look at how much she's got done. But you know what, in your own knitting, you don't have to be a podcaster. It is super encouraging when you feel like you're not moving anywhere and you put that progress keeper on and you see you've grown an inch and a half. That's an inch and a half closer to the end maybe. So use those, measure your results, allow yourself to feel like you've accomplished something as part of this slow process. Number seven. So this one can be a tricky one. I like to allow myself to dream, plan, think of what else I'm going to be knitting. So I may be knitting with Ravelry open and slowly scrolling down through the new patterns and looking at them and thinking about what yarns I might want to use and would I like that? Should that be the carrot out there helping to drive me forward to the next project? And also, looking at new freshness always reinvigorates my knitting no matter what I am knitting on. So that's my number seven. Dream plan what you're going to knit next. Number eight, mindlessness. So if you are stuck on Stockinette Island or uh, being a Stockinette zombie or you know, you've got to finish the body of the sweater and it's all knitting in the round. Let yourself go on autopilot. You don't have to pay attention to every single stitch. For me, that means an action movie because an action movie will take me right away. I will not be paying attention at all to what my hands are doing. They will autopilot it and I will have worked through several inches by the end of a movie. Number nine, for this one, you have to be disciplined, but you set your goals, you're achieving your goals, you're talking about your project. You can also allow yourself to wander a little bit. You don't have to be monogamous. This isn't a relationship, you and this knitting project. You can allow yourself to work on socks. So the example, this past weekend, I set myself a goal of getting to the end of the gray color in my shawl. And when I got to that point, I said, okay, now I'm gonna work on my socks. And so I set it aside and I went to the socks. Allow yourself a break, like a cheat day. <laughs> and don't go hog wild, but just a little cheat is okay. It's only and number 10, which is maybe the most important thing, is stay positive. Revisit, re-evaluate. Why did I love this yarn? Why did I choose this? Why did I want to knit this pattern? Are these the coolest needles I've ever had? Wow, they're so slippery and smooth and the yarn just glides right across them. This yarn is so beautiful. The twist is gorgeous and perfect. Oh, my stitch definition. All of those things. If you're using cute notions, admire your notions. Admire the project bag. Allow yourself to feel gratitude and inspired by this project that you have created, that no one else has made, that is exclusively yours and one of a kind. And yes, it may be slow knitting right now, but you will love it when it's done. So those are my 10 uh, ways to get over not in this minute. <laughs> I hope you enjoy that. If you have an idea that's different from what I recommended, please leave a comment below. Let me know. I'd love to hear how you power through monotonous knitting. I need to seriously work on that sweater because it's been two years and I have eight inches, seven inches left on the body. So I did a great job knitting during the Dark Phoenix. Dad and I went to the movies this week and the movie was decent. It was, I would give it a B. Like it was a fine movie, maybe a B minus. It was a fine movie, but um, I prefer my action movies with a healthy dose of comedy. <laughs> and we've come to expect that with, you know, Iron Man and the Avengers and Thor and who else? Guardians of the Galaxy. And there was another comic book one that's super funny. Deadpool. So X-Men, and this is probably part of the reason why I don't like that series as much, is so much more serious. But X-Men was my favorite, was my dad's favorite comic book. Wolverine's his favorite. Thor's my favorite. Revisiting that. Um, so he really enjoys those movies. And of course, Michael, Michael Fassbender? Magneto. Mm. So, hold me accountable. Next week I'm going to have more done on that sweater. But I did get like an inch and a half, two inches done sitting in the movie theater because I did not allow myself to work on my socks. So that moves us into what I'm working on. And really the reason this episode has had all this front content before the works in progress is because 
they're not very exciting and I don't have much to show. So these, <laughs> this is where I was on my first one. This is my DVD sock. It's a vanilla toe up, two by two rib on the front, stocking it on the back. Wendy Johnson pattern. I've made, I think, 16, 17 pairs of these. It's my go-to sock pattern. So this is the colorway lighthouse. And so I've got my little scooter there. Makes me think of my mother-in-law when I see it. She works for a scooter company um, in the office, making reservations for people to go on vacation. So she loves doing that. She's done that as long as I've known her. So like 22, 23 years, I think is what she said. Anyways, um, so there's the first one, right? You remember I ripped back what I had, so now I'm knitting with crim crinkled yarn and little pieces. It's just so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I've done today because I am using the progress keeper method of keeping myself motivated and getting through my goal of seven stripes a day. See, I use these all the time in my life. I don't know why I'm not applying them to that sweater. So yeah, that's it. I'm knitting them on size zero two millimeter needles because I like, I'm a loose knitter and I like a denser fabric. And then the other project, which I alluded to, I did a lot of knitting this weekend. Steve and the boys went up to Rockland, to my in-laws, and got um, his father's canoe. <laughs> so the canoe is 42 years old, and it looks brand new, except it's a little dirty. <laughs> Nothing a pressure washer can't fix. So they brought that home, and while they were doing all that adventuring for the day, I did some knitting. So, and I watched, what did I watch? the Vietnam Ken Burns documentary. It's not easy to watch. It's definitely a thinker and um, it's, I always, having been a child of the 80s, I, Vietnam was something that happened in the 60s and I was not a, aware of the details leading up to it. So it was interesting to hear that five presidents were sort of involved in the catalyst for this like it, for the war it had it took a long time to get to a boiling point and both sides of the aisle made mistakes along the way so um yeah so when i was knitting this was the first time first day of gray right and then i wanted to see how i was going so i put on my merida so this is the spring cleaning shawl by stephen west if i hold it yeah that is how i'll wear it so it wraps hang on there It'll go like this. I changed my initial plan of doing one section of stripes and did two sections of stripes. I think I was working on that when last we spoke. Maybe not. Maybe I was in the greens. No, I have a clip. I have a, a thing. Yeah, I had finished that. Okay. Doc, my doctor's over there telling me where we were and this is where I am. <laughs> Just loaded up with keepers. So, guys, why didn't you tell me these all fell off? So it's an enjoyable, um, easy to follow pattern. And I think I'm really gonna love the results. I feel like I'm intu intuiting, intuiting that this gray section was the largest section of the shawl. I could be wrong. There are two more sections to knit and I'm tossing around whether I'll do another gray section because there are a lot of short rows in this pattern. So it would be easy to maintain the stripes going down because the next two sections are essentially this and this again so I think it might be nice if I put the stripes over here not sure but I also have these two that had been part of my initial plan design for this so I don't know it will really change it if I go this bright and this green is more of a spruce green than even this green so We'll see, I might do that in stripes. I don't know. I don't know, but I used all but 10 yards of my electric lime, so that was nice. Swamp thing is what that's called. So, good to have that done. Um, this is over 500 yards at this point, so yay! I'm happy to have that on the go and excited to be working on a new section. Oh, show. So, um,. Yeah, that leaves me with life talk, and it's not a lot going on around here. Last day of school was today. Ro is home for this week, the rest of this week, and then he goes to camp for three weeks. But he's reading Big Nate right now, and we've decided that this summer we're going to do Earn Your TV. So 
Uh, for every hour that he reads, he can watch an hour of TV because we normally watch TV on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and that's it, not during the week. And I, summer is about relaxing and having fun and reading <laughs> and watching the TV shows you love. So I think that's a good balance of how we can encourage reading, keep pushing him forward, and um, still enjoy ourselves. So we went to the library and signed up for their program. He signed up with the school's reading program. We're going to get so many rewards for reading. It's going to be awesome. So, and Tristan is good. He's good. Yeah, he's just him. <laughs> So I think that's all I have for you this time. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you have comments, feedback, anything, I would love to hear it. Please let me know what you think, what your anti-monotonous knitting tools are. And um, yeah, join the orange color, Cal. So that's it. Take care. I'll see you in about 10 days or so. Take care.